that regarding the protests in France over high petrol prices, now French President Emmanuel Macron has refused to slash petrol prices there. The president says he hears the protesters, quote unquote, but will not scrap fuel taxes. There's been major chaos witnessed across Paris and across France, specifically on Champs Elysees on Saturday, as police used tear gas shells and water cannon to disperse the protesters. The demonstrations had been built by the Yellow West movement as Act 2, quote unquote, in a campaign that began a week ago, though the protests initially focused on a rise in a fuel duty on diesel. They later grew to reflect anger at rising living costs, particularly in rural areas and other grievances against President Macron's policies. More than 100,000 people took part in those protests spread out across France on Saturday. Observers say the protests are more against inequality than against taxes per se. Let's go straight across now to Alina Cassez Montanez, our correspondent joining us live from Paris at this point. What is the reasoning that's been given so far uh, by Emmanuel Macron for that decision, Alina? So President Macron is walking a very thin line here. On the one hand, as you were saying, he needs to calm the anger of the more than a quarter of a million people who've taken to the streets across France in the last 10 days or so to protest, uh, particularly against that rise in the fuel tax, which comes in on the 1st of January. On the other hand, though, in this wide-ranging speech on energy policy that he's given this morning, he also needs to show that France is sticking to its targets under the Paris Climate Agreement and indeed setting an example for other countries. So, he said, we all must take our collective responsibility in, uh, in, fighting, in cutting carbon emissions and fighting global warming. We can't be in favour of the environment on Monday and then against fuel taxes on Tuesday, he said. And that's why he won't be doing a U-turn on that fuel tax increase. He did say, though, that the vast majority of the price at the pump is down to geopolitical factors and not tax, and that in the future the taxes in France would be adapted according to the global price of oil although quite how that mechanism would work, he didn't explain. He did also aim to confront some of people's concerns about the cost of living, saying that the energy transition would in the end be cheaper for everyone because moving towards renewable energy would cut people's energy bills and making it clear that there's public money available for people to switch to less polluting cars and to make uh, energy saving measures like insulating their homes. Right. On the other hand, Alina, we do expect an intensification as far as the dissent is concerned, as far as the protests are concerned. Help our viewers understand uh, the anger which is simmering on ground. Do we expect that to also transform into further protests? I'm not sure. I mean, I think it's possible that the protest movement could fizzle out. It's certainly true that the violent behaviour on the part of a small minority this past Saturday has perhaps put off a number of people who might otherwise support them. But there were opinion polls last week showing that over 70% of the French had some sympathy with the Yellow Vests movement. That is to say they have concerns about the cost of living and uh, worries that the government is ruling only for a small urban elite and that it's unconcerned with people who are finding it hard to make ends meet at the end of the month. Now that's a criticism that Macron pushed back against directly in this morning's speech, uh, more directly than he usually does, uh, saying notably that he re rejects the criticism that ecology is just the concern of the urban bourgeois and that if something is not done now to cut carbon emissions, it will be the poorest who suffer in the long run. Uh, it's the poorest who suffer the most from respiratory diseases caused by air pollution, for example, he said. So he was very much concerned with trying to address those worries head on and with trying to reassure people that the government does have their wallets at heart. All right, we're going to leave it there for the moment, Elena. Thanks very much for that uh, comprehensive update on what the situation is looking like as we speak in Paris. The French president has refused to actually accept those demands raised by the protesters through those violent demonstrations as well, but at the same time saying that he is, quote-unquote, hearing the demands of the protesters.